I wanted to show you how I do my um, cut out my bias binding um, because a lot of you have been asking how do I cut it on the 45 degrees and stuff like that so what I'm going to show you with this camera and the, the overhead camera that I've got there which obviously I can't connect up to the PC yet um, I'm going to show you how I do it um, because I, I sometimes struggle when I'm doing the 45 degree angle um, when it comes to the bias binding anyway. So um, I always cut my fabric um, in half metres and it's only because I've only got at the moment a uh, 35 inch by a 22 inch mat. If I had a, a full length one I wouldn't be cutting it up. But I work on a square method, so basically I cut the um, the fabric up into half meters. Then I then cut it that half meter up into um, half again. So I basically near enough got a square. I cut the two salvages off, obviously, and then um, I cut on a forty five degree angle on that square. Then I twist the triangles round. So, you make like a, I don't know what kind of shape that I'm drawing, um, a, a box that's like squiff, <laughs> and then I just basically sew those together, and then I cut my stripes, and then I sew those together. So I'm going to show you how I do my method today, okay? Right, so I've got my half metre. And obviously it's not going to all be on the camera. So I basically keep it folded as it comes, when it comes off the bolt. And what I'm going to do is just fold it again. First of all, first of all, I'm going to just cut down this side and cut down this side. And then I will have two squares. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Just making sure I've got this all neat. And I'm making sure it's basically going across one of the lines on the actual cutting mat. So I'm just going to trim one eighth on the folded side. So we need as much of this fabric as we need. And then I'm going to cut the complete salvage off on this side. Okay. Okay, let's get rid of those. Right, so I'm left with two squares now. So I'm just going to pop one of these squares to one side. And now, if I zoom out a bit. Okay. I'm going to cut from that corner here all the way down to this corner here. Now you probably won't. That's it. So I'm just going to see if I can get my rule. Right, so my rule doesn't meet. So the way I'm going to do that is trick is match up the two corners. Now it won't be a perfect perfect square because I've done just over half a metre. So if I just match it up the best I can. So on here I've got an overlap on this side which you can't see. So I've got an overlap on this side which is fine. And I've got an overlap on this side. That's fine, don't worry about it. What I'm going to do next is just bring that corner here. Sorry. Bring that corner to that corner. Making sure those still stay together. So at this point you can actually pin this top corner. Making sure your pin is going down that way. 
like I've just pinned it so it holds both pieces together and what we're going to do is just to make sure we get the center pop those together and just give this line here so I've basically put pop those two corners together making sure that pin is still in the center so it's on that center crease and what I'm just going to do is just give this a good finger press you can use a, a pressing tool if you've got one I, <laughs> I'm quite lazy I use my Cricut cut um, roller to make creases don't crease it too much because oh press on it too much because you've got to remember that's the bias which has got a stretch so we're just basically making a crease and then we're just going to open up back out and we've got a faint crease there which is fine that's what we need and then what I've done is lined the bottom fold to a marking on the mat a straight line on the mat and I've made the pin on one of the markings going vertically and then we're just going to remove that pin in a minute remove that pin pop your cutting um, quarters roll down and pop it making sure it's on the tip of that triangle all the way down to the center so basically this should be on that crease and we are just going to give it a bit of a cut down right so now we should have from that square two triangles try and not stretch the long pieces okay so we've got now two triangles so the next thing we need to do is make that weird shape that I was drawing earlier on. So you're going to get the one triangle and you're going to get the really long side pointing that way. I'm just going to zoom out a bit. You might see a bit of the flooring but I want you to see the full length. Right, okay. So excuse the floor in here <laughs> right so you now got one pointing that way then you get the next triangle and what we need to do is flip this one so the 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 longest edge which is the biased edge is on the opposite side we need to then make these we need to sew this together basically so we have to pop this so it's right side to right side and you should have a shape that's like like a flag and we're just going to pin this side here these two edges so if I bring this further down so you don't see my head and and what you will find is that you will get two little doggies overhanging on the two ends that's fine don't don't worry about that so we're just going to pin these together making sure both ed edges meet Right, so you're going to go to your sewing machine now and you're going to sew a quarter of an inch away from the edge no more than quarter of an inch and no less than quarter of an inch so if you've got a quarter of an inch quarters foot I would put that onto your actual machine so it's an accurate quarter of an inch and then once we've sewn that quarter of an inch we're then going to press the seam open and I'll show you that next bit. Right, so I'm just using basic Gutenberg thread um, in my machine. 
I'm using the Sew All Thread, which we generally use for bag making anyway. And my bobbin, it's probably about to run out as well. I'm using a stitch length 2.4 and I'm just going to sew that edge where we've put the pins in. We're going to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Like I say, change your foot if you need to, change it over to a quarter of an inch um, quilter's foot. Don't go over that quarter of an inch of what I've actually told you to actually sew. So I'm just going to do that. You also don't need to reverse your stitches at the start and at the end. So I'm not going to reverse my stitch, I'm just going to carry on sewing. All the way down that line. And obviously don't forget to remove your pins. Because you don't want a broken, broken needle. So then that's sewn together, we're going to open it out, take it to your iron and we're just going to press that seam open. Right so I've sewn that together and now we're just going to press the seam open. And you're just going to go along and give it a good press. You've got to make sure it's open. You're just going to carry on doing that all the way down. And so it is open like that. Right, so now I've pressed my seam open all the way along. We should have that weird shape that I was talking about. So, the next thing we need to do is obviously refer back to whatever pattern that you're making because this doesn't actually um, mean just for the keep it together bag this could mean for any of the bags that you need bias binding for so you need to I'm going to zoom out again if that's okay right okay so we're now going to pop this on your mat so it's like that so obviously my obscure square is kind of coming off my mat don't worry about that because I'm finding this is too big and too far away for me and you might come across this yourself I'm just going to get this one corner and fold that in okay that's for me to help me because I've got little short arms and a short body yes so my family keep telling me <laughs> and I'm just going to line this straight line up against a dominant line on my mat and then I'm just going to keep cutting down two inch strips so I'm going to cut every two inches I always use a long roll I know this is centimetres but I just use the markings on my mat so I'm just gonna cut two inches here and that's your first strip so we're just gonna leave that as it is like that and then I'm just gonna move down again and sew this bit um, cut that bit, sorry, not so. Right, I've got another strip there. So, because this is coming off the table, off the mat, I'm just going to get that corner, this corner, and move this up a bit. I'm just going to get this corner and bring it down to here. and making sure that is matched up 
So because I moved it, I'm just making sure it's on a mark, a dominant mark. Now I'm just going to carry on cutting my two inch strips. I will always be left with an extra bit. Never throw this bit away because it might be a time when you need to make some piping and that will come in handy for some piping cord. So never chuck that bit away. So you might not be left with this but I was left with it because I cut just over half a metre. So now I've got my strips. So I, I've just ordered a new cutting mat um, because this one's not healing up no more. So just bear with me. Never pull. If this ever does happen, never pull it. Because what will, could happen is one of the threads from the um, the weave um, will come out and basically make it thread bare. So you don't want to ever do pull. And obviously, especially because we're not interfacing this or anything. Right, so we've now got our strips all sewn and prepared, partly prepared. Right, so the next thing we need to do is now sew these strips together. So at this point you can go ahead and make, cut the other square, so cut the other square and sew it all together like we did and then cut and cut your strips. I'm just going to show you on this, on this square. Right, so you're going to get one of your strips and another, and have that right side facing up. Then you're going to get your second strip and we're going to have this wrong side facing down. So, and what I tend to do is just slightly overlap. So, as you can see, I've got that there. Tend to, so I'm not getting much waste. I use the markings of my mat and I'm just going to pop a pin on those two so that's one strip horizontal and that's right side facing up and one strip vertical and that's um, right side facing down so they're right side to right side but at a 90 degree angle and then I'm just going to pin at an angle through that then I'm going to get, I don't normally do this, but some people um, don't like to sew on, a, on an angle. So if you get um, a friction pen or marking pen, it can even be a, a normal pencil. And what we're going to do is this corner here to that corner, we're going to just pop the quilter's roll on top from that corner to that corner and we're just going to draw a line. My pen is actually running out. My pen is running out. Okay. Right. That 
line that you've just drawn will come your sewn line and that's where we are going to sew once you've sewn that line you then can flip this part this end piece right side facing up on the horizontal then you get another strip and you're going to pop that on the vertical right side facing down and you're going to repeat the same process and you're going to keep doing that to every piece so once we've clipped this together and drawn a line you're then going to flip this so it's right side facing up on the horizontal then you're going to add another strip and you're going to keep doing that if you're a beginner at the machine I will show you what I actually do which is to um, not draw a line and I don't need to pin and a chain stitch so I'll show you that method as well so if you're a bit more confident so at the moment I'm just going to sew this bit together here right so I'm actually going to knock my stitch length down to a, a stitch length number two and then I'm first going to sew on that line that we actually already drew right so I'm just going to make sure my needle is down on that line I'm going to remove that pin out of the way and just sew until I get to here I'm not going to reverse my stitch either right so I'm always going to leave my needle pointing down so the next thing I do is get the end here and I lie that horizontal right side facing up so you're basically doing this and it's right side facing up let's just move you out of it that's it so this is right side facing up and then I get a second strip like I explained before this this is going to be right side facing down and then I'm just going to sew now if you're not confident at doing this remember to pin and to um, draw the line now I always lift my foot or press a foot up keeping my needle down and then I'm about a quarter of an inch away but my presser foot is holding that into place and then I'm just going to sew And then I've come to the that second corner, leaving my needle down, bringing that second piece, that other end, that new end, over. So I've now got it folded. Get another piece. And I'm going to pop that right side facing down. Match that up to by the needle. And then I'm just going to sew again. And then I'm just going to keep repeating that process until I've done all the strips. Like I said, you don't need to do this way. You can keep doing the drawn lines and pinning each individual one. But I'm used to doing this as a quilter. Once again, I'm going to get the second strip. And right side facing down. I 
and I've got one more strip to do. Now I will cut my thread and lift up the needle and then I'll meet you back on the overhead camera. Alright, so now I've sewn all those strips together. First of all, it would appear that they are joined together so we need to snip those pieces of thread in between each join. Don't cut your fabric. One more like so so you now got a strip but the problem is we've got these bits here and we need to get rid of these um, dolphin fins mermaid fins mermaid tail fins I can carry on forever right so so the way we do that is obviously we need to come cut this side back to this seam so from that seam from that sewn line we need to cut a quarter of an inch to the mermaid fins and we're just gonna cut it back like so you'll be left with some dog ears we're gonna trim those back as well so what you need to do is put your quilters roll on the edge of the vertical and then just trim. Then you're going to move your quilters roll, put it on the horizontal and trim. And you're going to keep doing that for all of them. Right, so now we've actually sewn all those together and basically you will be left with some seams that need pressing open so we need to press those open but remember if you remember where we sewed those two triangles together to make that stupid squiffy square um, we will already have some seams in the actual binding so we're just going to press those open you're just going to keep doing that for all of them you might want to keep repress those ones that we did earlier on when we did the um, the square method give that one a good press because that one's coming undone You will get some times where you've got like a few joints together, it's not really a problem. You will get that if you brought um, bias binding already made. and then coming to my last one now sometimes you will get a join like this doesn't matter it's still on the bias which is fine as long as it's all on the stretch that's fine and I mean the stretch of the bias of the, bar, um, of the fabric right so at this point if you're one of those people that have got all the bias binding maker tools which are like the triangle things you can feed this in. 
Now, however, I actually don't use those um, tools. I never have done and only have ever used them once um, because they weren't around years and years and years ago when I first started to learn make bias binding. However, they probably, they are natty little tools, but my bias binding for some of my patterns or other patterns that I've made are all different sizes of bias binding. So I would have to have quite a few of those tools. So I'm going to show you how I do it. And this is the basic method where you fold it in half, matching up the two long sides and that's wrong side to wrong side. Give that a good press and you do that for the whole strip. Once you've done the whole strip, you can open this up the whole right let's try that again and um, the camera battery ran out so you can do it the old-fashioned method which is where we fold it in half wrong side to wrong side matching up the two long sides and give that a good press and you do the whole strip so you'll completely do that to the whole strip once you've done that you can open that out so you've got a dominant crease in the centre and then we're going to make pop the two long sides into that crease on the wrong side and give that press I tend to leave my iron there for a few seconds and move along six, five to six inches and pop that down and I'll keep doing that right so um that should be all your binding actually done so now this video has come to an end um, you'll be um, basically um, using this technique or your own technique to make bias binding for your key back so thanks ever so much and I'll see you all on the next sew along